Good morning, Storm fans. Brent Cook here today. We are not playing Storm. Well, sort of. We're playing Vintage Paradoxical Outcome in the Vintage Showcase. I worked on this deck with Jarvis U. Shout out Jarvis for helping me build a sweet, sweet deck. My first league with it, I 5 0'd, and then I 3 2'd another league, and then I decided that was enough. Uh, this deck is good. We're going to run it. So. Typically, I am pro running cards like Vampiric Tutor and Demonic Tutor in my Paradoxical Outcome deck because they help you find the best card in Vintage, in my opinion, Tinker. Black Lotus and Sustra Recall, obviously they're really good, but Tinker is the card I would like to resolve the most. So Tinker is just like an insane card. Those cards help you find it. The problem is Black outside of that doesn't offer you a whole lot. You get Yawgmoth's Well, which is fine, uh, but you could argue that Breach is even better. So why am i running white that's a pretty good question right uh well one you can't run three colors when you're running ursa saga and saga is one of the best things you can be doing in vintage it allows po to backdoor into a bunch of things so the first thing is uh man vault key time vault right like just infinite turns is a really good thing and part of this is when you have these two in conjunction you get infinite turns but you also have time lock so when you have two different ways to take an extra turn with Mentor, you don't really need a Yawgmoth's Will um, because most of the time you're winning with Blossom Citadel into Mentor and then taking an extra turn. Well, with Will, you don't really well, you don't really need Will to do that anymore. So Saga gets this half of this combo, but then you, you're sort of just like trying to draw your Time Vault, uh, which is a little bit difficult, especially without Tutors. That said, we draw a lot of cards between Paradoxal Outcome and citadel etc well let's get back to that question why am i running white there's a lot of combo in vintage right now uh there's a lot of doomsday there's a lot of po lavinia is a house versus those decks lavinia is also really really strong against all of these new bizarre decks that are not really dredge decks but hollow vine variants i mean lavinia is also great against dredge if you can draw it especially on the play stops mind break trap hollow one uh grief there's a lot of cards that Lavinia stops, so Lavinia is an all-star there. Uh, it's pretty bad against the blue Xerox decks in the format and shops, so we'll be boarding it out there, but I think Lavinia is really strong right now. And then we have Teferi Time Raveler. I cannot put into words how much of a garbage card repeal is, and that's not an opinion, that's fact. Just fact. Uh, it's not actually fact, it is an opinion, but no, it is fact. Uh, I don't like repeal. I think that it's a pretty bad Magic the Gathering card. Uh, jokes aside, Teferi gives you protection against the most commonly played counterspell in the format that isn't Force of Will right now, which is Fluster Storm. Every deck is trying to run three or four Fluster Storms in it that is blue. So Teferi just like shuts down all those opposing Fluster Storms like that. It's so good. And on top of that, it gives you that back door that Repeal does while actually being good in matchups. Like, Repeal is nice because you get to bounce your own Mox and draw a card. Outside of that, it sucks. Uh, it bounces Chalice on zero, and that's pretty much it. I guess you could theoretically bounce a Deafening Silence, but Teferi is actually good in a card you want to resolve in a bunch of matchups. It, it's also insane against Doomsday. I really like the card. And then obviously Monastery Mentor is the uh, win condition in white that you should be running, especially when you have double time lock. I did like the mono blue list with Urza, but I think white is where it's at this weekend. And part of that is Prismatic Ending in the board. This card is so versatile. It answers Deafening Silence, Chalice, Planeswalkers, which is sort of a thing that PO has a hard time with. While we are just straight blue white, we do have all these wonderful Moxin in here to make colors and opal. So Prismatic Ending can remove a, a, a Narset, a Hull Breacher, you know, Dak Fade and whatever. Uh, I, I realize I listed three blue Planeswalkers and Pyroblast could have done that as well. But Prismatic Ending hits Chalice and Deafening Silence and a bunch of other things. On top of that, you can board it in against Shops. The card is just very versatile. And that's why we're running the basic planes in the board. And four copies of Flooded Strand to support this planes. Boarding it in against Shops, you get a third basic. Two mana answers to um, Spheres. So what you can do is if your opponent plays a turn one Sphere, you can announce Ending for one, pay two, and then it will exile the Sphere, much like the Engineered Explosives trick. So Ending is just a really great card. Um, so we covered the Flooded Strands, the Mana Base, Urza Saga, 
you know, we're, we are running 18 artifacts that doesn't include Velocis Citadel. We're running a sweet Pithy Needle and Soul Guide Lantern in the main deck as Urza Saga targets for the graveyard specific matchups. Needle can also name Wasteland, so that way follow up sagas can win the game. Uh, I haven't actually done that yet, but I know that really smart people that play more PO than I do recommend the main deck needle. Shoutouts to the Power Nine. And yeah, I mean, it's been good. Uh, there's been a few times where I've like probed my opponent, saw Bizarre, and then turn one needle, game one Bizarre. Uh, I mean, that's sort of lucky, but it's come up. So you don't have to run these slots. I think that these are arguably two of the sketchiest slots in the main deck but they do give you some versatility in game ones and they open up cyborg space. I'm a big fan of that. Um, I mean, a bunch of broken one drop vintage cards here. We're not changing any of those. Same thing with these. Uh, we covered those. I mean, we've covered the main deck at this point. So if you have questions on the main deck or cyborg, shoot those down below. And what's a little bit weird about the board is we have two big dumb robots. That is because the bizarre decks literally cannot be a Sphinx of the Steel Wind. The card is bananas. And Bladesteel Colossus is for the shops matchup in particular. Uh, Sphinx is not very good against shops. They can just play a Stone Coil Serpent for one and brick wall you for the rest of the game. So. I really like having two big dumb idiots. Uh, they also come in in different matchups, so it does cost you a board slot, but then again, people run Lurus and Vintage anyway. There's nothing wrong with running two big dumb idiots uh, as long as you can make the rest of your deck work. And I think part of that is having Prismatic Ending to reduce sideboard slots. Like you'll notice we're only running three Hercules Recall. That is because we don't need a fourth. Uh, for the, those matchups because ending can come in in so many matchups. So it is opening up cyborg space and that's why we're seeing uh, these two cards in the board. And by running a needle and a soul guide main, you get to skimp on dredge hate in the board. So we only have a needle and a tour mods. This list, there's a lot of thought put into it. This wasn't just the list I threw together. Jarvis and I talked over this list for like an hour before I played it and a lot of it makes sense. Uh, Force Negation is also for the Shops matchup, but it comes in versus Doomsday as well. The card's just really versatile, and that's why I'm not running something like Mindbreak Trap. Mindbreak Trap is a trap, uh, pun intended. You really only want it versus like the P.O. Mirror and Doomsday, where Force Negation can come in in so many more matchups. So that wasn't an accident. We put thought into that. And then Hull Breacher, you know, it's great versus Xerox, uh, P.O. Doomsday. It gives you that extra effect there. Uh, it's a clock against Doomsday, so you can actually board out Mentor there, and I'm a big fan of that. That's my intro. That's what I have to say. This is the deck list. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. While you're down there, make sure to subscribe. It is the easiest way of supporting this channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're already subscribed, like and comment. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this video today, and hopefully I kick a lot of butt. I'm hoping that's what happens. And if you've already done those three things, consider becoming a member. Right next to that subscribe button, there's a button that says join. And there you can see my member uh, reward. So the first tier, you get sweet badges, emotes. I'll shout you out every week if you're a new member. Uh, and then in that middle tier, becoming a stormtrooper, I will make you two cyborg guides every single month on top of other sweet benefits like 50% off donation decks and more. And then you can be, join the combo cabal, which is everything from those first two tiers, but also you get a free donation deck every month. So those are ways that you can support me and this channel, you can also just go directly to the epicsroom.com slash donation decks, attach your TXT file that you can export from Magic Online, and then some, pick your tier. There's a bunch of sweet rewards. Make sure you go to that link and check out the rewards. And from there, you know, hit submit, attach, attach that file, etc. You can also just go directly to the epicsroom.com slash shop. We've been selling those mini token packs. We are now under 20 copies left. You want the original mini token pack? You better head over to the epicsroom.com slash shop. Paper magic is returning. You need to keep track of storm and mana. That's where you go. The epicsroom.com slash shop. Pick up that mini token pack for $12. Actually, let me just show you. Why not? Let's head over there. For $12, you get 54 tokens. That's like insanely good value. You get 20 Storm, 10 Black, 10 Red, 5 Blue, 3 of the Rust. This token pack was made with the Epic Storm in mind. So that means that on the backs, there's 54 Goblin tokens, 6 of each, with funny phrases, etc. They're all lovely. 
And then they're mini, they're half the size of a standard Magic the Gathering card. That's where you go. Like I said, get your mini token pack. And hopefully you enjoy this video today. I'm finally done shilling. And uh, maybe I'll take a breath here or there. But I'll see you in round number one. Hopefully we kick butt today. I love this list. My only concern is not finding Tinker enough. But otherwise, I think that this list is beautiful. I really like Lavinia and Teferi in the metagame right now. And the Prismatic ending is just beautiful. Uh, yeah, I'll see you match number one. Welcome to round one of the Vintage Showcase. Our opponent has taken a mulligan, and when I looked them up on MTG uh, Goldfish, they have a long history of playing Dredge. So opening up on our one of main deck Soul Guide Lantern is pretty good here. I don't love having Citadel in hand, but there is a unique thing about playing the Urza Saga deck, which is that Saga can go and get Black Lotus, which allows us to hard cast Citadel. So it's not as bad as it used to be. It's still not great, but it's something that we have access to. And our opponent has gone to five cards now. Honestly, I think our best draw is probably Urza Saga off the top. I mean, there's also just like Black Lotus, because then we could turn one uh, Citadel with Force Backup. But like so Urza Saga is our most realistic best draw. Uh, because we have three copies and i was right it is um dredge or, i mean this could also just be like black green hollow one um i think i'm gonna let that go so they have one card in hand mystical okay um i'm not sure what that does here i think i'm gonna remove one of the copies of blood Ghast. Okay. Yeah, this probably isn't Dredge. I mean, it could be, but um, I don't know if Dredge plays Ghast anymore. Now I feel like a genius fetching up that basic. All right, they're getting in. Um, we do have this Hercules to bounce these later, um, but we would need a land off the top here. It's bad. So it's bad for a number of reasons. Like one, we really wanted to land, but this Cabal Therapy is most likely going to name outcome. Uh, so it's just like really bad. Is it Dredge? I'm getting some info here. Okay, it is Dredge. Um, I could have used Soul Guide in response to the gas trigger. I just don't think that's the best way of uh, going about it in my opinion. And now we get to get rid of the therapy, which is kind of nice. So we still have access to this outcome, but with only having Mana Vault, I don't see us winning this. So we're going to one here, which means the force is shut off. Uh, and if we leave Mana Vault tapped, we lose. Like, this is just really bad. All right, Miracle Draw. Nope. Black Lotus. A little bit late, uh, but what does it allow us to do? So, I do have Tinker available. I just don't know what we're getting. Um, like, we don't have Key. Because, like, if we had Key Vault, this would be an easy decision. Um, and being at one, Citadel's dead. Hmm. What's nice is Hercules does convert into an extra mana. Or an extra card here. Uh, let's Hercules ourselves. Uh, maybe using the blue mana isn't worth it, but I feel like we need to do something. Ancestral, okay. That, that was probably a lucky draw. Um, I guess in theory, if I had Mentor, I could like go bananas, but. All right, deck, carry me. Carry me to the promised land. Triple box. That was really bad. Um, yeah, that was awful. Hmm. I don't know what. I mean, I guess I cast Mystical here and just look at my deck. I could get Time Walk. Uh, that doesn't actually do anything. All right. Uh, we're going to brainstorm for a miracle here. This would have to be like one of the best brainstorms of my life. And that is not good enough. Okay, game two.
Okay, so we probably want this format script. Needle makes a lot of sense. I like Force of Vigor. Uh, I'm sorry, I like Fluster Storm 4, Force of Vigor. And then Sphinx is really good in this matchup. You could probably board out Citadel, um, especially because of Force of Vigor. I don't like Teferi. Lavinia ends up being very good, uh, so we can keep Lavinia in. I don't love Narset, uh, so that can definitely go out. So the way that it was explained to me is Narset does stop Bazaar, but Hull Breacher doesn't because it's a replacement effect. The problem is that Nurse is just never going to live against Dredge. Um, so right now we have an extra slot. Uh, we can also board out Misstep. Okay, so I could board and sit it all back in so that way we have two good Tinker targets. I don't love Teferi. So I could do like Blight Steel or Prismatic Ending. Ending hits like Chalice, but not much else. Um, I have a minute to think about this. I could also do the planes. I don't think I like that though. Maybe I'm supposed to just leave a Narset, even though I don't think it's very good here. Let's try it. <sighs> All right, on the play against Dredge. And there's our friend Narset. Um, no second land. Sphinx is awkwardly in our hand. I don't think I'm supposed to keep this. It just doesn't do enough. Like, what is the game plan here? Prey? I don't think I'm supposed to keep that. So they're going to six. If we hit a land off this probe, this hand is actually very good. Uh, the question is if we hit the land. I think I just have to risk it. I mean, I could win or lose right off this probe. Come on, deck. Be good to me. Uh, we probably just lost. Mind Break Trap. Grief. Yep, we just lost. <sighs> Needed a hit there. Be interesting to see what they discard here. Picrid. Switching Cabal Therapy. So they have double grief. All right, so we know two of the three in their hand. Maybe if I get lucky and hit a land here. Okay. Wish I would have had you on turn one, but. And I'm going to play a Opal now. I'm trying to do my best to beat Trap. And if they, you know, draw into the good stuff, it is what it is. Um, so they're going to keep Shell as a dredger. And they did not hit another. I guess they could next turn exile like her decorate and then make a zombie. They could also grief us right here and take our mana vault. And that's what they're going to do. That's kind of tough. Yep. Yeah, this is not looking good for us. Um, this is a rough round one. So I guess next turn I can tap Urza Saga. Um, I mean, this is going to require us to be super lucky in order to win. But I could tap Saga for mana, go get Lotus, play Citadel. It's just we're so unlikely to win here. Like, we, we have seven life and need to beat a trap. Okay, so is Sphinx better here? Um, I want to think through this. So what I could do is I could get Tormod's Crypt, hypothetically. Play Opal. I mean, if they have anything here, I'm just dead. But this gives us a fighting shot of winning the game. Please resolve. No, you can't mind break that. Now we get Sphinx. And then in their upkeep, we can um, crypt them. Wow. Are we actually going to have a chance to come back? 
Tinker was just like an insane draw there. They're gonna concede. We got it. Wow. How lucky. Um I don't know if there's another card that should be in the deck over anything else. I really don't like Narset, but like is a land better than Narset? Like that's a real question. My problem with the prismatic ending is I feel like it costs too much to actually like to exile anything meaningful, it's just gonna be very difficult. Uh, I could do Hercules. Hercules would stop their nuts hollow one draws, but also gives us some protection from Chalice. But I don't really like Hercules. We could do misstep for their misstep because they do run one misstep. But like, what are the odds that that actually happens? Um, I just don't know. I think Nurse it's probably the best card. If you have any strong opinions on this, feel free to let me know while I'm just like deliberating. It's going to be, I mean, obviously you can't help me now because this is a recording, but let me know if you have any strong opinions on what I should have done there. Like, I think Narset's probably the best choice. I just don't know for sure. <sighs> this seems fine. All right. So they've used the serum powder here and another serum powder. They have surgicals. That's kind of shocking. Um... We're going to try our hand. Yep. Do you have another one? No, okay. So we're just going to go fetch Pearl Soul Guide. Lotus is like an and draw. Like we, don't, we can't do anything with it yet. Am I supposed to fight over this? I think the answer is yes. Try to hit their dredger really doing this all right going all in i guess we might as well play the lotus because if they have like grief or something or decide to flashback therapy they're not getting anything out of our hand okay so they're gonna go down to one card here so if we can get lucky and like find the random uh tinker we could possibly win this um do I care about a narco? Icarid. Do they have a stinkweed in hand? I think I'm gonna let that go. Maybe that's wrong. But I'm also thinking that they might therapy. And part of the reason why is I'm thinking that I might need to use Soul Guide to draw a card. Wow, we ripped the Tinker? <laughs> no justice oh wow how lucky all right do i let them dredge or let them put eckerd into play here i think the answer is yes because otherwise they can uh upkeep bizarre that's what they're gonna do here um, so they can dredge, and now I can use this. I don't know, I mean, I don't know if they can come back, but I guess we'll find out. Jeez. I mean, our opponent has to be a little angry. My top decks here have just been unreal. Both post board games, the deck is just carrying me. Uh, I'm gonna let Icarid come back because like we can't possibly lose to an Icarid. So why use Tormod's Crypt? I think how we lose this is that our opponent just puts a ton of um, Bridge from Blows into their graveyard and this is just gonna make sure that we can never lose to Bridge. Sure. You have 16 cards in your deck. Yeah, like I just don't know how we can lose when we have Crypt. Like the Spirit or the Sphinx might have been enough but we just can't lose them unless we mess up now. All right, so it's Sphinx getting in. Um, I'll crypt you, sure. Good luck beating me. And they're gonna concede, wow. 
<laughs> we got so lucky this round. Like, I'm not going to pretend that this was skill. We just hit runner into runner into runner two games in a row. Sorry, opponent. You probably deserve better, but uh, I'll take it. Good deck building, uh, putting good cards in your deck, cards that don't have uh, the word drudge on them, uh, apparently rewards you. So I will see you in round number two. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, my skill show there. Uh, definitely skill worthy. See ya. Welcome to round number two. We're on the Dragon's Bill's Eye, who typically play shops decks. Uh, here we have a hand that doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm going to ship this. Um, sure. Guess we bottom the fluster. I don't love this hand. Mana Crypt. I mean, I think I left that resolve. We don't even have any artifacts in our hand. Sure. I hope that Mana Crypt kills you. Sure. Yep. <laughs> okay. I would like a land. All right, so they can't activate this next turn. Provoker. I think I might actually force that. Um, yeah, let's get rid of the lav. I would love to find my saga right here. Um, bad draw. Is it even worth playing? I guess in case I draw Academy, I should play it. But it's not very good. So they can't activate this this turn. And whatever artifact they get uh, is likely to be shut off by Null Rod, so it needs to be something that doesn't care about Null Rod. What did they get? A Needle? Sure. That's fine. Um, so unless they draw a land here, this other Saga isn't going to be able to make a construct. That's what I'm worried about at the moment, it's just that construct. Come on, miss that land. Miss that land. Pass the turn, come on. Ah, oh, that's brutal. That was the best land. That was a good draw for the opponent. Um, I guess the only upside for us is that the Mana Crypt and the Tomb could do some damage. I don't know. No lands here. So they're going to make a big dumb idiot. And yeah, we're going to be dead pretty quickly here. So even if they lose this, I don't know if we're, yeah, and they won. So even if they lost it, I don't know if we could race the Mana Crypt. So I think our outs here are we draw land time walk Hercules. We're taking eight, we go to 10. Draw, okay. That did not go off. Womp womp. All right, so we get the planes, Hercules, White Steel, Ending. A lot of cards coming in. Force of Negation. We can board out Lavinia. The Flusters. Mental Misstep. Soul Guide. A lot of cards. Um. So at 62. You could argue maybe the needle. I don't have any strong opinions on that. Narset can definitely go. Hmm. I think it's going to be the needle for me. Part of the reason why is I want to keep the blue count high. And if we board out um, another blue card with six forces, it does get a little bit sketchy. So that I'm going to board like this and just hope for the best. <sighs> okay. I want to keep this, it just doesn't do anything. Turn one Tinker. We have to hope that our opponent doesn't have a certain card in their hand. Okay. I'm just not going to play around it. Rewarded. Okay, and that was a game of magic. It's one way to beat shops. Um, do you want to change anything? Probably not. Yeah, I'm just going to run this back. <sighs> I 
Um, so thinking about how this hand would actually work is we have to turn, assume they're going to play like turn one sphere. Um, so this has a turn two ending. This hand just doesn't do enough, I think. Punished. I guess we keep this. This hand's bad too. Well, I guess our seven one of being turn one current either. Cage. Yeah. I I don't know what I was supposed to do. I mean, maybe um, I should have played Soul Ring on one because uh, if I rip like um, Academy. Okay, I guess nothing matters. Uh, I could have made a construct. So I think I was supposed to play the Soul Ring, it just didn't matter. <sighs> sure. I just don't know how we're ever going to beat this Karn. Um, I guess we can beat it with Tinker. Just need to draw Tolarian Academy. So, hypothetically, if we ripped Academy, I could cast Tinker. Yep. Current is just so brutal. I wonder if they're thinking about quartering me. Another? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, that's actually going to lock us out here. Uh, we're not going to be able to beat that. Um... I don't think we're going to be able to get up to Taff. So am I supposed to keep the crypt in hopes that we find exactly... I don't think so. That's not going to do it. I guess we can eventually get Merchant Scroll, or Mer not Merchant Scroll, uh, Ancestral. Okay, another cage. It could Ghost Quarter me twice here and just get the other island out of my deck. Yeah, I don't know how I come back from this. Not very good draws either. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we're just dead. I'm going to concede in a second. I just want to see what my draw step is. All right. So we are now one and one after losing two. I'm going to assume that this is a shop stack. Uh, see you in round number three. Round number three, we are on the play. I'm I'm lazy. I didn't look up what our opponent's playing. Uh, wow. All right, don't judge me. I'm going to keep this. We're going to draw, you know, even the worst artifact in our deck, Mox Opal, is great here. So we have a plus one look, maybe a draw step. All right, Jordan. Let's go. What are you playing today? So we have a Mox and the, any artifact that we can cast for free or a land. Mystical Tutor. Uh, and I got punished. All right. Um, so we're just going to pass here. I still have Maripods in. Take those out. Um, yeah, so that hurt, obviously. Now our opponent's going to have Pyroblast up for our Ancestral. Volk. Okay. I mean, that was a risk. Like, this hand is still very good in the matchup. I just need to draw an artifact or a land. They chose not to preordain. So there's a stop in our upkeep for our opponent, and we hit the land a little bit late. Um, it's fine. I wonder if I should Mystical or not. Probably not. I think just like any land off the top is really good. And we're on the end step. So our opponent could cast like a Brainstorm or something here. And it'd be good for them because like I still can't Ancestral due to the Force of Negation. All right. Long pauses from the opponent. Okay. 
using their scalding turn. Probably, ooh. I guess that made sense. I was thinking that they were going to get a second red source, but that doesn't, the math there doesn't check. Two on top. Okay. So we know four of the six in our opponent's hand. Another preordained, sure. So next turn they will have uh, Tef online. Two more on top. Artifact. Uh, this is not looking good for the home team. So if they don't, okay, well now they can do everything. Uh, I was going to say if they didn't have a land here and they played tough, we could respond with uh, Ancestral, but that's gone now. Uh, yeah. Really getting punished for my keep this game. Yep. You got it. I feel like Artifact or Land was like a pretty high probability, and then, I don't know. I just don't know how we're going to beat Double Pyro Force Negation at this point. I guess the real answer is I need to sit here and allow my opponent to play super slowly, uh, because that's what they've been doing. Make them kill me. Because one of the things about Jeskai Xerox is that it really, really struggles to win the game. Uh, it looks like they're on Breach. So, I mean, I'm glad that I sat here because now I know that they're on Breach and not Xerox. Okay. Perfect draw. Perfect draw. This Breach? Yep. Put Underworld Breach from the opponent. Do your thing. So I'm going to sit here and let the opponent, uh, you know, execute their combo. So they can go get Brain Freeze here, Petal, then play Petal again, and then Brain Freeze. And we can get some more information out of our opponent's deck by not conceding. I mean, that Cold Breacher... So they're playing a Tinker plan. They hit Black Lotus. Yep. And I'm probably going to concede here. Yeah, they're targeting me. Okay, game two. Did not go very well. We can get the Needle out of our deck. That's a dead card. Same thing with this scroll. Lavinia is actually not super good here, but they do have to, like, Pyroblast it, I guess. Bring in Fluster. Soul Guide is like fine, but not great. You could board Encrypt. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's just something you could do. We can also side in Breachers. I don't love Mystical here, so that can definitely get boarded out. Hmm, maybe I should just board out Lavinia. I fear is all these threes. Like, Lavinia is just, like, not good enough for the most part. Because it doesn't matter unless they're trying to kill you that turn. Otherwise, it's just, like, a grizzly bear. So we can either keep in the Torn Mods or board out Opal. I think I'd rather board out an Opal. Just, like, Torn Mod Script isn't great by any means. But if they can't kill us with Breach one turn because we have uh, Crypt in play, it's probably worth it. I don't know. It stinks because, like, the world in which we hit that land, I think we're probably favored to win. And instead, like, we just got dumpstered that game. Absolutely just crushed. In testing for this event, the league that I 3 to both my losses were to Breach. So I'm not feeling super confident in these post-board games. Um, sure. So this is a turn to Tef or Narset with backup. And our opponent has taken a mulligan. I wonder if we can actually do both next turn. Uh, in like an ideal world, let's say our turn one, this turn is going to be Tundra, Sapphire, Soul Ring, 
we play a land we have five mana i guess we could uh play both walkers on turn two assuming that our opponent chooses not to interact with us i don't know if that's the best line because like that means i'm not holding open fluster storm for uh like pyroblast or something so okay like i said we're gonna be tapping sapphire here for soul ring I don't think Prismatic Ending is a card we want in this matchup, just because I feel like the matchup isn't really about permanence. So if you're wondering, that's why I didn't cite it in here. Like the Teferi in game one obviously wasn't great for us, but at the same time, uh, we didn't lose because of Teferi. We lost because our deck just like didn't cooperate. All right, they're on five cards here. Ponder's a reasonable draw. I think I want tough. Whoops. I think if one had to resolve, I'd rather Narset resolve over tough. Pitching force. I'm gonna fluster. All right. Well, our tough got double forced. That's a good enough trade for me. All right. So they're gonna have one card in hand, and then we'll have Narset ponder on turn two. Maybe we want to ponder first, I don't know. All right, so two cards versus two cards at the moment, but we have four permanents in play. Force negation. I'm gonna ponder. Ooh, I like this. Give me that juicy info. Breach Citadel, nice. All right, well, I'm definitely playing Narsa here. Okay, minus Narset. Guess we take Time Vault. Because now uh, Urza's Saga represents just winning the game. And our opponent, they're up against a wall here. They have two cards that don't do a whole lot. Uh, their best draw is like Pyroblast, and I can force that. And they're going to concede, so we're going to game three. All right. Hmm. I'm having second thoughts if they're maybe I, I, I do want Lavinia. Hmm. Can we're not mentor. This becomes like sort of hard to win. <laughs> um, like, I don't think mentor is great against breach. And then like maybe a PO. I don't know. Probably brought out the crypt. Let's try this, I guess. Like my problem, and I talked about this before boarding for game two. I guess my problem with Tormod's crypt is that, like, if they're not trying to kill you, it's a bad card. Uh, it, like, crypt never matters unless their graveyard is stocked and they're like trying to resolve breach. Up until that point, they're a Xerox deck that is bullying you on card advantage, uh, which is part of the issue. And this is going to be a mulligan. This answer is not capable, and they kept seven. All right, this is fine. Um, I think we get rid of scroll. Okay. Volcanic Island, classic. And now they're passing. So... We have an interesting decision on how to play our turn one here. Uh, Force Negation was a great draw. So I think now my plan is actually to just turn one Ancestral on their upkeep and try to fight with it over Force, maybe? Or see how they play turn two. Okay. Maybe I'll just go like Saga into top. Okay. I like this. Silver Ring was a good draw for this game plan. I'm gonna fight over my Sensi Stop. Sure. <clears throat> so ideally, if I'm like trying to not lose this game, we have four copies of Fluster. I would like to top into one of them here. When it's trying to figure out if they want to let top resolve. I think they're brainstorming because it would be easiest if they just found mental misstep off of brainstorm. And is top resolve? Let's find out. 
Uh, there's still a long pause here. I think they're deciding on what to pitch. No? Okay, tap resolves will activate with the floating mana. Pio. None of these are actually that good here. Um, so we could try to play Lavinia next turn. And then with Pio on top of our deck, we have Force of Negation Ancestral. And we can still activate Saga. I'm not sure what they're doing here. Sure. So they're going to get their copy of Ancestral now. Okay. Worried about death. So now we play Lavinia. Okay. So we know that there's a PO on top of her deck. If they Ancestral here, I can't counter it. And no fear from the opponent. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything about that. So I could have tried to resolve my Ancestral there. Uh, maybe I should have. Hmm. So I'm going to try to resolve Ancestral here, I think. If they have double Pyro, like, there's a chance that I just get crushed here. Um... They have Hull Breacher. Is that what they're thinking about? I think our opponent has a Breacher. Let's see if they counter this. My sequencing here doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, why would I fetch uh, the top away before doing this? Not the best. That's for sure. We're so far away from killing the opponent. So I get to resolve my Ancestral here because the Lavinia is in play. Okay, that was actually pretty good. They do have a Time Walk turn, which is something to be concerned with. I'd really like to be able to untap because if we get to untap, I can go get Soul Guide Lantern and shut off their graveyard. But it's a big ask here, like for our opponent to not kill us. I think I forced this. Like the Lavinia is the only thing keeping us in this game, I think. And if we let Lavinia die, all their forces turn on. Are they passing? I hope so. They have six cards in hand. All right. We're going to make a construct here. It's going to turn on Metalcraft. Take our draw. No, this goes on the stack. Let's make another construct. And we're going to get Soul Guide Lantern. With Soul Guide Lantern, we're going to exile the Ancestral. So that way, if they uh, play Mystic Sanctuary, they can't get it back. And I'm going to play Mana Crypt here. It's a, it tells our opponent that we don't have uh, double, like we don't have Force in hand. But I'm not going to swing with the Lavinia because I had a feeling that they had Hull Breacher previously. And I don't really want to open up Lavinia to dying to Breacher or Snapcaster. Although it could possibly matter if uh, they get an extra turn out of this because right now we only have 12 damage and they're at 13. Is this Breacher? Yep. I had a feeling that turn that they, that I was going to Ancestral and then they ended up Preordaining, they went Time Walk Preordain. I had a gut feeling they had Breacher in hand. Four mana, what is this? Wow. Um, am I supposed to draw a card here? I think the answer is yes. Let's see if I can hit a fluster. Oh, the hole breacher! Ah, oh. that was just dumb. That was dumb. So now I took away my ability if I drew Tinker or something this turn that they wouldn't have Pyroblast mana up.
But I guess if they had Pyroblast, Lavinia wouldn't be in play. Ah, oh, that was bad. <sighs> okay, just gotta play tight. Big Tough. Please resolve. They can't force of will. They would have to have a pyroblast and they've used two. Can't fluster it, you can't force a negation it. So th there's probably two pyroblasts left in their deck. So it, we could get super lucky here, hypothetically. Oh, that was a dummy move. And we're even for that uh, draw card thing. So I could get really lucky here. We have Tinker, we have four POs. Um, there's some decent draws we could possibly get here off of this Teferi Bounce. Uh, Flooded Strand was not one of them. Okay, and now we can get in. And they have to play Hull Breacher in their main phase due to Teferi. The problem is, like, Underworld Breach just, like, crushes us here. And I'm going to get punished. Yep. This is me losing the game because I tried to draw a card off Soul God Lantern. So they're probably going to Pyroblast. Okay, Lavinia. So they have Hull Breacher and three unknowns. Time lock. Oh no, they can uh, Merchant Scroll for uh, Brain Freeze. Yeah, I just lost this match because of that punt with the Soul Guide. Um, it's a bummer. I guess they can miss on the brain freeze, possibly. Like if their brain freeze is just like no zeros. <sighs> yep. All right, so we need them to miss on 15 cards. It's a lot. No Lotus Petal, no uh, Black Lotus. Chat. That's going to do it. We just lost. Because I misplayed. Uh, how did I forget about Hall Breacher? Yeah, I'm just going to concede. One, two. A little bummed after that last round. Uh, no excuses. I just played poorly. We're dead for top eight. At this point, we can only top 16, so we might as well just play tight and try to get there. Um, this seems fine. I don't know what our opponent's playing, but turn one Lavinia is good enough. We can actually play out. Um, we can go Delta, Pearl, Key, Opal, Lavinia. I guess the one downside of doing that is Mind Break Trap if they're on Dredge. Um, it also opens us up to Force of Vigor out of Bug. So maybe we don't do it that way, because it's not like we can really abuse the extra mana next turn anyway. And our opponent might not be with us. Sorry, motorcycle went by very loudly with the... Uh, I have a new, what is it called? Like filter on my mic. Uh, through the OBS settings, so now I have a sound gate, but the motorcycle was so loud that I'm like trying to sit here and be quiet so I don't uh, like cause the editor to pick up like me being noisy waiting for the opponent, but the motorcycle was just so loud that it picked it up. Okay, we finally have an opponent. Let's go. Ooh, that was an F6. Okay, if they're gonna F6, I'll play Lav. Or play out the artifacts into lab. Boom! Turn one Lavinia on the play. Can we make it stand? Shop. Okay. Well, they can play something that costs one. Or a, not, or a creature. They can play a creature. Lavinia! Okay, I see you. Boom. Now we have force. What is this? Null Rod. No, that one will not resolve. Get out of here. 
Get out of here. They can play another. Okay, well, they don't have anything that costs two, apparently, so we'll take our turn. Um, Wasteland seems like an okay name. Still have this awkward opal in our hand. Need to draw something that actually does something. Because otherwise, they'll eventually be able to play through this Lavinia. Saga, okay. Sure. Their own Saga? Sad. I don't know if we're going to win this one. We can just have six here. They would need another land to activate for a construct this turn. A land that isn't Mishra's Workshop. We also win the game at any point if we draw Time Vault at this point. So Tinker wins the game. Um, Alright, so they can activate Saga now. Looks like they're casting something else. Karn? Yep. And uh, Lavinia was not enough to make it stand. We're going to lose to this Karn. Sort of a bummer. Come on! That's a bummer. That, I used all my luck in that round one, and now here we are. Okay. Here are the flusters. Here are this messed up. Narset can get out of here. I don't like Lavinia in the matchup. Soul Guide stinks. And the needle's not great. Um, do I want to change anything else? No, this seems fine. I think this is how we boarded for round one as well. And apparently, uh, 12 is more than X and a white. Who would have known? Friendly reminder, if you're not familiar with my content, I'm a part of the Eternal Glory podcast alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, we discuss game theory as well, which transcends formats. Make sure you check us out. We're available on all major podcast platforms. That is the Eternal Glory podcast. Game two on the play. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, do some damage with this saga. You might be asking, like, Brent, why don't you Merchant Scroll for Ancestral? I considered it. I really did. The thing is, I'm probably going to have to pitch a card to Force Innegation this turn. Um, so I don't want to have to pitch Ancestral. Our opponent has a very high storm count. What you gonna do? Thorn. I'm gonna let that go. I can't counter that. So that actually kind of stinks because now we can't activate the Saga on our turn. That was a decent draw. I could try to keep them underneath their own um, Thorn a little bit by removing a Mox. So it stinks is that the saga is going to die before I can use it. Yep. All right. Ooh, good draw. I mm, think I want like Soul Ring here. What's Herx them? No, Ancestral. Uh, so if I get Mystical, I could get Tinker. I could cast Tinker on our turn. That seems good. I can also beat the, the Thorn, so I don't have to worry about that. Sapphire into Ruby. Yep. And what will they play here? I will force that. Okay, and now we upkeep Mystical. So we're going to get Tinker and then Blade Steel. 
Basic planes, vintage all star. Get Tinker. They can know that I don't have anything in hand, I don't care. Emerald's not that great. We can get rid of that. And then a Blight Steel. Even the Revoker can't block it. And we're going to win game number two. Let's see if we can steal game number three now. I think we're already boarded correctly, so I'm just going to hit submit again. Okay, this hand uh, seems pretty good to me. We uh, would be a lot better on the play, that's for sure, though. A lot of things can make this go wrong. Shop into spheres, good start. Okay. I like that. I think I don't want to play Lotus because it's like a prime revoker target. Okay. Crucible. Yep, it's a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. That was good. Um, do we win this turn? Let's taps for three. I can Hercules them into Mystical Tinker. Okay. And then Tinker, getting rid of the Opal. And Blight Steel. We even have a Her Hercules Recall and a Force Backup. And our opponent concedes. So we're now two and two. Let's just try to win the next four. Good top 16. Sorry. All right, round number five. We're facing Super Cow. I've played them a bunch in the past, and they usually play Bizarre decks. Let's see if that's true today. Um, our hand is fine. I mean, we don't have a Force in it. But our hand plays magic, technically. I think it's reasonable. And Super Cow is taking a mulligan. I believe that they play um, Graveyard Ducks. I could be wrong. All right. Maybe I'm mixing them up with someone else. Uh, Goldfish has them under like a variety of different decks. Okay. Looks like they mulligan into Ancestral Recall. Pretty good one. Honestly, I would love to draw a zero mana artifact here. Yep. Not a land. I did not want that. I think I'm just going to get Basic Island and cast Ponder. Those are not good enough. I'm going to ship. No reason to play out the uh, artifacts now. I could play them next turn, which increases storm count for Fluster, so that way my PO is protected. And the jig is up. They drew into Gitaxian Probe. Am I dead? This looks like Doomsday. One on top, one on the... This is definitely Doomsday. Okay. Mystical. So, the Academy will tap for two. I mean, like, is P.O. here even good? <laughs> I'm just going to pass. I think the plan is to, like, end step P.O. And then let P.O. get countered. And then, like, I can untap Mystical for Ancestral with Fluster back up. Okay. And they're just going to pass. All right. Well, here's my embarrassing PO for two. My divination. I guess this is inspiration. And it looks like this is probably getting countered. Dig. All right, we're very, 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 very likely facing Doomsday. And I would appreciate it if this BO resolved. Days feel bad. Okay. Now they have to discard a card. <coughs> and the discard is... 
Doomsday. All right. Upkeep Mystical. Sure. Probably should have just let that resolve. I guess I could have gotten Tinker, uh, so that's fair. Come on, zero mana artifact. It's not what I said. Draws have not been great this game. I have to imagine that we're pretty close to death. So I guess our best draw is like Black Lotus. Um, they put one on top, one on the bottom. Might as well get a Tundra here in case we draw like Lavinia or Teferi or something. Come on, Black Lotus. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do here. This PO Resolve. If their hand was so good that they discarded a Doomsday, I'm not super confident in my ability to win this. Force Pitch Mystical. I'm going to let that go. It's not like this Divination is going to be game-defining anyway. The problem is that Doomsday is also like a 3 or 4 copy of Flusterstorm deck. Uh, maybe I should have countered that, because if they get Necro here, I'm in trouble. But I mean, they discarded Doomsday, which means they probably have another Doomsday in hand. So maybe it's a damned if I do, damned if I don't. Alright, so we really would like to draw Black Lotus. Or I suppose even Tinker. Uh, Tinker would be a little bit awkward. Because we wouldn't ever have Metalcraft, and that means that we wouldn't have Fluster Storm back up. I mean, they knew that I had Fluster. So they still have whatever they vamped for. And the draw is... I wish my opponent would take the stop off my upkeep if they were just going to, like, pause forever. Do, 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 do. And a draw that does nothing. Alright, I'm just going to pass. Pretend that I have strength. Are they double queuing? I just don't understand what's taking so long. Okay. Interesting. Do they really vamp for another Doomsday and pass? Okay, well, we have a fluster. My opponent just told me they're double queuing. So, Black Lotus would be a good draw. Tinker, PO, um, Ancestral, Merchant Scroll. We have some live draws. A little surprised they didn't Vampiric for Necro. Because I feel like Necro would have taken over this game. Waiting on the opponent. Okay. Something good, maybe? Can I please have a card with text on it, please? Nope. Um, so, this is a fluster mirror, so like having mana in play isn't bad. But I'm supposed to hold this mana vault because, um, like, if I do draw action, I want my fluster to be able to counterspell their mana, or their counterspell. And I have mana to pay for theirs, they don't have mana to pay for mine, so... The storm count on this mana vault actually matters. Okay. Are we dead yet? We've drawn a lot of lands this game. I feel like our opponent should have been able to beat us by now. Another Doomsday? 
Another fluster. So it's worth noting our opponent, uh, if we do draw an action spell, probably as a force, because we've just been like countering all their action with flusters, which means they haven't had an opportunity to use force yet. Also, out of all the lands we've drawn, none of them have been Urza Saga, which would have just like demolished this game. Speaking of the devil. Um, just pass. They have one Doomsday left on their deck. That said, like, they still have Oracle Consult. Hmm. Opponent's pretty low on time. We haven't drawn Lavinia or Teff, which would have been good. I wonder if I'm supposed to hold this fetch land for a possible brainstorm. Or maybe I hold it for top. Okay, I, I probably should hold it. Preordain resolving. And preordain has resolved. They put two on the bottom. Going to seven. Okay, so we're at least getting one on tap. Saga becomes active now. As in, like, can make a construct. So we could threaten lethal next turn with a few lucky draws. The time gap here is just, like, ridiculous. Come on. All right, so we drew Lotus, which means we can cast Citadel. I just don't think there's, like, any chance in this world that Citadel resolves. Lotus. Plus the Citadel. Like, their deck still has four forces in it, and it's been a long game. Switching days, yep. So we're going to let that go, and hopefully they don't murder us here. There's one Doomsday left in their deck. Oracle Consult might get the job done. And they've just conceded. Nice. Okay, so we got game number one. A very long game number one. But now we can bring in a bunch of anti-Doomsday stuff. Let's get the Soul Guide out of here. Needle. We don't want those. We don't want Hercules. We actually brought out Mentor. Because, like, we don't really want... We want to be the control deck, so we can get rid of that. Need one more slot. Honestly, I think it's mystical. The card disadvantage here is just like too much. So I'm the control deck. I'm just going to try to, you know, like hold Reacher, Lavinia, etc. And we don't really need it just a big dumb beater when we have Urza Saga, which is a nice thing about these lists. Okay, so our opponent has about nine minutes to win two games. This is a good hand. I'm going to keep this. I mean, Citadel isn't great, but like as a six-card hand, I would snap this. So why not keep Citadel? I guess the, like, the one concern I have is Daze, but oh well. I tested Doomsday a lot over the last two, few weeks. Uh... Like, because I thought maybe I would play it in this event. And Doomsday is just like, it's never as good when I play it as whenever I see it being played against me. So it's probably Pilot Air, but I just lost to everything with Doomsday. I also like Rage, uh, and maybe Rage isn't the right word here, uh, got really angry whenever the game would glitch. Like there was once where uh, like I had to discard to Necro and like the game just like glitched out. And there was another with um, like undoing a doomsday because I stacked it wrong. I, I had the game won, I just stacked it wrong and tried to undo, and all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. Okay. Am I allowed to have a pearl? I'm allowed to have a pearl, that's a good sign. Opal. What about a probe? Show me your moves. Okay. Is this an opposition agent? Sure. Oh! <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I mean, Citadel's in my hand, but... that Like, come on, you have to appreciate that. Uh, Tef looks good here. I can bounce the op agent. 
Yeah, we're gonna keep this. Um, sure. I missed these, so I wonder what they drew here because they could cast another cantrip and they're choosing not to do it. All right, so now we draw Narsa. So they could have drawn like a Fluster. And we have an Opal underneath here. So uh, we, if we bounce the agent, that's what we're drawing into. I wonder if this is Mystical Dispute. It, it really could be Dispute. Brainstorm, sure. Uh, they might be looking for days off this brainstorm that would do it days force all that good stuff So assuming like hypothetically tough resolves I bounce agent I think that I would pitch tinker to force Really long brainstorm you have seven minutes. Let's go Does tough resolve Horse pitching Oracle. Horse pitching Tinker. All right, so now we bounce Agent. Draw the Opal. Um, and I could play the Opal here to have Fluster up. I'm not going to do that. Like, I think it's pretty unlikely that they just go like Ritual Doomsday. And this Opal, uh, hypothetically could cast us help us cast something more meaningful i guess is what i'm trying to say and i knew that our opponent still had a, a, a pair of cantrips or at least one cantrip so like just playing this out doesn't make a whole lot of sense so right now they have op agent and two unknowns one unknown i guess it could be ritual agent probe sure okay so now i can play nurse at this turn is Narset? Oh, um, I guess I should just go get Ancestral. Draw the cards. Plus. Okay, and I can still play Narset this turn. Blue. And our opponent's going to concede. All right, so we are now three and two. What up? Round number six, we're facing Paxu, who's taking a mulligan. I don't know what they're playing, but like obviously I'm going to keep this hand. Hand's great. We have Tanka, Lavinia. Really wish this emerald was a pearl, though. Be so good. Opponent going to five cards now. Okay, and they've kept their five. What are they on? Mox. Well, that's going to get messed up. Get out of here. It's so likely a P.O. Mirror. Which means that this Lavinia is pretty good if I can uh, resolve it. Yep. Come on, something good. Well, it's a turn one Tinker. Um, I'm like, trying to think if there's... A way that I could key vault this turn? I don't think there is. They could like try to tap their top to draw into a force or a blue card here. Citadel. Bummer. Okay. Please don't kill me. <laughs> we know that they have top and two unknowns. There's the top. All right, I like spin. Spin is good. They're drawing with their top, which I don't like. That is bad. Okay, so they're just holding open Fluster. Speaking of Fluster. Um, all right, well, we'll just play Lavinia. What a Citadel, am I right? Come on. <laughs> Um, I don't know what they would have gotten with this vamp, but I'm not letting it happen. 
All right, so they're drawing top, and they have one unknown. And the one unknown was not good enough last turn. Okay. So now we draw a scroll. Yeah, I guess we fetch. Um, is it crazy to get Brainstorm here? Okay, our opponent's just had enough. <laughs> All right, so we're playing the P.O. Mirror, their Esper. I like Force Negation. Cluster is pretty good. Uh, I don't think I want Prismatic Ending. But I know that I can get rid of the Circles. I don't think uh, Needle's very good. I don't like Soul Guide, so all of those can go. Probably want Breachers. Probably get rid of Mentor. Like, big dumb beaters just aren't what the matchup's about. And then probably get rid of Mystical. Looks good to me. We're almost like a control deck. I think I like this plan. You could argue that you should board out an Opal instead of uh, Mystical. I think that's acceptable. Um, I don't know. I like having Opals for color fixing. Helps with like Tremon Lavinia or Teferi. Speeds up into all these three drops we have. And obviously, good with PO. But one nice thing is like our deck doesn't necessarily need Mentor anymore just because like you have infinite turns and then you have Urza Saga. I did have a pretty cool uh, win when testing. I had Monastery Mentor, which I mean, we're boarding out, so it's not going to be applicable for this post board game. But I had Mentor and Citadel, and instead of taking an extra turn, because I had already used Time Lock and I hadn't found a key yet, I just made 20 monks and then sacked them all to Citadel. I mean, it's possible. And I used Key to untap Citadel. Sure. Keep. Am I supposed to ship this? I don't know. Lotus off the top would be delightful. I also take a mana crypt. I had no intention of playing any spells, so that works. Like, this actually plays into what my hand does. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Thank you for playing Remora. Yeah, you can have a saga. Oh. So they're going to be able to make constructs and pay for Remora. Kind of a bummer. Okay, so Soul Ring will pay for Remora, and then they can make a Saga, or a Construct with the Petal and the Tundra, assuming they don't have another land in hand. Okay, and they're just passing. The Constructs are actually fairly scary. I'd rather them not uh, make a Construct here, honestly. Also, like I don't really like Remora without Luris. So this seems a little strange to me. Looks like they're making a construct here. Yep. And are they going to make a construct or let Remora die? Looks like they're paying for Remora. Okay. So the construct is going to be a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Not sure what they're doing here. Is it Tinker? Sure, you can have Time Lock. Yep. So the question I'm wondering is, do I try to play Hole Breacher on their like, end step or anything like that? I don't know. Because I can't protect it with Fluster yet. And they're all in on paying for this Remora. Are oh, they going to try to PO here? All right, well, I will fluster P out. <laughs> um, so they can actually pay for PO and then force a copy. Should I try to Hull Breacher instead? I guess the problem with Hull Breacher is that it still allows the opponent to reset Remora. Hmm. This is an interesting spot to be in. So Pio was countered. They let that happen. 
And now the Remora will die. Saga's good. They still have three cards in hand. Jeez. We're going to 12 here. I think I'm going to keep one fetch. Okay, that was a good draw. Let's see what we can do with it. All right, well, we don't need double opal. Um, so I'm just trying to think, like, how this would actually play out. If I put back Time Vault, so I can go soaring off this land, Opal, Top. We could PO, but they could just force it. I think the Time Vault should probably go back. All right, let's try this. I think I need to try to do my thing here. We're getting pretty close to being dead. And they can't fluster. So, okay, there we go. So many Lavinia. So we can actually PO again here if that's what we want to do. I'm not sure. I think it's probably just better to play Breacher. All right, so they're going to make a Construct and then at least swing for five. Maybe boarding out Hercules in the P.O. Mirror isn't the worst thing ever anymore. I don't know what my opponent's hand is. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. I'm willing to bet they almost have a fluster. Like, I'm just, like, trying to figure out what they might have. And, like, not a lot of it's making sense. Because, like, I thought for sure last turn they would have had a force, and then they just, like, didn't. Okay. What is this? Please don't be it. Please don't be it. Okay, I like the activate of Saga. I'll go to five. Uh, if it's Time Walk, I'm dead. Time Walk would actually make sense for a card that would be in their hand. All right, not Time Walk. Okay, so we need to figure out how to beat uh, a Fluster. And by starting on Lavinia, we can shut off Force of Will and all Force Effects. Third Opal was a little bit of an awkward draw. Um, actually, I think I should play top. See if I can find a Fluster. Um, so I can bounce a Construct. Is that good? Shuts off Flusters. Um... So I just want to think about this because I could, I might be able to do some cool stuff here. Um, so hypothetically, let's say I tap this for a mana top in response draw. Yeah, I think I can do some cool stuff here. So top will priority spin draw. All right, so now I want to put uh, mana vault on top of the deck. Okay. And now what we'll do is play the Fury. And this will shut off Fluster. Bounce a Construct. We draw that, and now I can PO. The question is, am I supposed to attack? Because if I attack, I can replay Hull Breacher. Um, if, like I can like I can bounce the whole breacher as an extra card to draw. Alright. Uh, so now this is gonna be appeal for five. Okay, leaving tough in play because I don't want to lose the fluster. I mean the I mean I could have picked up tough actually, but I still think it's right to leave it in play. Another PO is pretty good. Um the question is, do I want to leave Saga back? And I think the answer is yes. Because I think there's a good chance that I draw like a land, like a Tolarian Academy that I would love to play. And Opal, is there a blue source here? Right, and I can actually play top. All right, now hold control. 
We're going to PO these back. Feeling okay about this now. Draw up top. Mana Crypt. Ooh, we hit Sapphire? Sure. So the question is, what do we do from here? I can Merchant Scroll for another PO. Um, I think that's probably one of the best things we can do. There's one PO left in the deck. As long as I didn't pitch it to Force, and there's nothing in Exile. So that is still true. I'm going to tap in here. Not going to be relevant. Uh, no, I do not want to cast that. I want to cast this card. It could theoretically kill me, but isn't going to because we have a fourth outcome still in our deck. All right, blue. Let's Merchant Scroll go get that outcome. We're going to draw all of the cards. So we have four floating. This is our blue. So I can afford to play the other top here. Um, okay, now we have blue. Still have my land drop available, but I'm saving it for Academy. We do not have a Mentor in our deck, so I cannot win with that method. And I hit the Academy. So now I'm going to be a little bit more cautious about playing the Mana Crypt. Okay. We can tap the Ruby, because the Ruby is essentially a colorless mox. Uh, Opal. 18 cards left in library. Um, I'm just like trying to be cautious about this. All right, I'm going to tap this. And let's Ancestral. Okay. I don't mind a few more pieces of jewelry. Ponder. Nurse, that's fine because it could find key. It also clears top. Only 14 cards left in deck. We'll take a force. Uh, activate top. <laughs> no key yet. Um, hmm. Let's think through this. We, uh, we've played our land. I mean, I guess I put Breacher on top. I could, like, flop top, play Citadel. Our opponent got bored. Um, I could flop top, play Citadel, and that could get us a couple more looks into the key. But we, I think we probably would have found a way there this turn. I just, like, needed to think about it a little bit. But that puts us at 4-2. and two. Almost to the end. Round number 7. We are on the play. I don't know what our opponent's playing, but I'm definitely going to keep turn 1 Ancestral. Uh, yeah. This seems great. So because of Force Negation, we'll be casting this Ancestral Recall in our opponent's upkeep. And sort of weird, uh, this hand has both back doors in it. So if our opponent's on Dredge, we have Soul Guide. If they're on Chops, we have the Hercules. Uh, and if they're a blue deck, we can pitch Hercules. Like, it all sort of works out here. I'm not saying that this hand is incredible, but, like, it's decent. Okay, and now we're going to try to resolve Ancestral Recall. And if our opponent's anything like me, this pause in the upkeep always makes me go, like, come on, you have the Ancestral? The answer is yes. Okay, so not a bizarre deck, not shops. Bug. Um, that's fine. Okay. I think I'm going to play the Needle on Death Right. Feeling a little bit of a lag here. Maybe I need to restart. Play top. And I'm going to try to cycle this uh, guide for like literally any card with text on it. So uh, that's why I'm playing it out here. When it still has six cards in hand. And this matchup is often about spells. So like having all this stuff in play doesn't make me feel very good. Collector Oof. Um, let's attempt a force. Okay, happy that happened. So that means that they probably don't have a force in hand, or at least a force of will. 
I'm gonna top try to get some card quality rather than just like a blind card and these are both great okay um I'm wondering if I should try to draw I, actually I probably don't need to because if our opponent tries to um force this I can just uh sacrifice the soul guide I think I'm gonna leave it ooh Tess. okay so now I can play Teferi bounce okay the soul ring top key I think I'm gonna hold the soul guide actually no nah, I'll play it out so at first I was like you know what I'd rather hold it so that way I can get some equity uh, with activating top I think I just want to cash this soul guide in so our opponent can play oh, I was going to say they could play Leobold here and we have the backup to fairy for Leobold sure nice goif all right let's draw a card uh we can get tinker yeah so i think that this is just going to win the game let's just go get tinker and then we can get uh vault sacrificing the mana crypt and that's just going to be game okay let's take another turn their opponent's going to concede nice all right so we're facing bug board in that planes board in the endings board in the sphinx uh i don't know how i feel about the rest of our board i don't really like whole breacher or force negation breacher also just gets like stonewalled by eternal grief and stuff so i'm not a big fan of that uh lavinia is kind of bad here I, I guess they have all the forces like force of vigor and stuff maybe i'm supposed to leave in lavinia um but I can definitely board out Needle and Soul Guide. Hmm. Probably don't want Mystical. Hmm. Trying to figure out what I should be boarding out here. Could do like one Opal. I don't hate this. Trading an Opal for a basic plane is basically a little bit of extra stability. Sign me up. Turn one Tinker with Force backup, and we have Prismatic ending for like a Death Rite or something? Hell yeah, this hand is insane. Like, this is just like one of the best hands I've ever opened. <laughs> just wow. Sure. Well, we're gonna force you. Okay. And now we just jam Tinker. Island. Storm 2 so we can get through Mindbreak Trap as well. Uh, actually, I think I want to remove their uh, Mox. Like, they're on three cards. Let's just, like, shut them off. Get out of here. Next turn we can make Saga. Like, this hand is just bananas. Opponent chose not to open up on Forcible two games in a row. Can't believe it. Just a shame. And just like that, we are now 5-2 and two with one more round to go. Can we make top 16? Probably not. I was in 42nd coming into this round. Uh, my tiebreakers are awful due to how we started today. So we are likely playing for top 32 at this point. Um, not the end of the world, but it is what it is. I'll see you in match number 8 the final round we are facing mental misstep our good friend at cedrus aka stefan schultz and we are on the play if i had to guess stefan is probably on uh breach but i don't know for sure this scene seems fine to me i'll keep this probably shouldn't have let on the academy that was probably a small mistake um playing this out now which is like kind of weird but I feel like I need to if I'm going to PO on turn two. 
I have no idea what Stefan is on. Looks like bug. Okay. Interesting. White source for Teferi would be huge here. Ding. And I will fight over Taff. Sorry, that needs to be white. Rewarded for playing out that needle. Force pitching fluster. Ooh, it resolved. Okay, uh, I'm actually just going to plus here because if Stefan plays a Leo or a um, Collector Oof, I need to be able to do something about it. So I think it's just safest to plus here. And then next turn, I can PO. The downside is obviously Abrupt Decay or Trophy. All right, Termogoyf is not one of those downsides. All right, take a draw. Bounce that. Um, so this allows me to PO for four. I could, in theory, bounce the Teff, but I don't think that's correct. Okay. But well, we have a force now, which is kind of nice. Stuff I was never going to name Burning Catacombs, just to let you know. All right, we need to pass here. Um, I think that's fine. Sure. PO is a great draw. Well, it's plus tough. I think I want to start on Merchant Scroll for like Ancestral. That was really good. Okay. Um, so I can PO here. The question is if I should bounce Tef or not. I think the answer is actually yes. Let's see what Steph has in hand. Two cards, Cruise Island, okay. Oh, we drew the key, so we just have infinite turns. Bring out our artifacts. Sorry, lagging a little bit here. All right, and we've taken game number one. Wooch, wooch, over bug. I'll take it. Let's see if we can just get this last one. All right, Sphinx, Prismatic Ending. Same way we boarded last round. Planes. Um, I think that was it. And then I boarded out Needle. Although Needle didn't end up mattering there, but being able to not care about Wasteland was sort of nice. Um, I think we boarded out Mystical and then an Opal. Yeah. Could board in the fourth Fluster, but like a lot of the things you care about in this matchup just aren't creatures. Um, like Collector Roof, for example. And I'm definitely keeping this. Another great hand. I mean, it's not turn one Tinker, but it, you know, it's it's a keep. We'll try it. If I have to force, I'm pitching the outcome. Uh, the downside is if uh, Stefan has like Force Fluster with this sort of opening. Time Vault, that's a good one. Am I allowed to have a Narset? I am. I guess I take Ponder. Okay. I mean, we're just we're running hot right now. Energy Flux, Collector Oof. Okay. We're going to force the Oof. Pitching. Outcome. Next turn we can Merchant Scroll for Ancestral and cast Ancestral with the, uh, the jet that's on top of the deck. And I'm going to do that before I use Narset because I don't want to accidentally Narset into Ancestral because uh, Ancestral is just our best target with Scroll, and I'd rather not. Because, like, what does Scroll get after that, right? So, Ancestral. And then, you could have argued that, like, maybe I was supposed to nurse up pre, um, or I should have nurse it pre-Ancestral in case they drew Force, but if they had Force, they would have fought over Roof. Uh, and now we just have Key Time Vault with Force backup. 
So I just need to draw a mana source on our turn. I don't know what land they played last turn, but they definitely don't have collector roof. Oh, they played a Misty. They went turn one underground, see? That's what happened. If they trophy Narsa, I'm going to let it resolve, just because it gives us the fourth mana to win. Well, that's not going to resolve. Um, I think Pio's better than Lavinia. Aw, that's a bummer. Okay. So it looks like we're not running home free yet. I'm a mana short of taking infinite turns. I think I'm just going to pass. Okay. That's going to shut us off again. No point in even paying for this mox. Once again, we're a mana short. Um, I'm just going to pass. I guess it, infinite turns is we can't do it because of the energy flux. Um, I didn't consider that. <clears throat> so if we draw like an off color mox, I could prismatic ending. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like we're pretty far away from winning. Because like also a trophy can break up our infinite turns. Also, they have two unknowns in hand. We were running away with this game, and then uh, Stefan is just clawing his way back in. All right, so I'm going to hold control here. We're going to do the top trick. I'm going to activate and then draw. Hopefully, I had a land off this. I don't really want to redraw top. There's Ruby. Okay. So white. Blue, red. We have Fluster back up. So if they have Force of Will here, uh, they could actually pay. The one nice thing is that we could PO on our upkeep if um, they do have Force. Pitching Gush. Yep. Oh no, I could have for Oh, I could have Flustered it. I forgot about the spell count. Oh no, it's fine. Um, we're, we're not dead yet. Oh, I messed that up badly. Ah, oh, I just punted. <laughs> oh, I just messed up so bad. I'm going to lose this now. Um, I think I should trade. I'm going to lose my draw step, but I don't have to lose my artifacts. Okay. I can't believe I, I did that. Uh, and I was just thinking about how well I've been playing the last few rounds, too. Yeah. I think we lost. Yeah, I punted this. Uh, it's okay. There's still a game three. I started out so hot this game too. <sighs> Probably just gonna concede after I see my top three. Okay, so in theory I could build into uh to fairy bounce energy flux into this stuff. I mean I just think that's gonna be a difficult ask, but so it would be easier if I could draw the mana crypt, but I can't. So I think I'm just dead. Yeah, let's just go to the next game. I, I, I messed this game up so badly. I should have won this. <sighs> okay. Just gotta play tight. Oh. A little disappointed in my play today. Like, I know what Hull Breacher does. I don't know why I did that. And, like, I played with Foster Storm for years. Um, for some reason, I was thinking of the Storm Count when, when I would cast Foster and not, like, Force Plus Foster. And I realized it once I hit okay. Like, I saw the Storm Count 
on the screen and just instantly realize that I messed up. So if I just took like a half second to think a little bit more about my play, that wouldn't have happened. <sighs> okay. Sure. That's a pretty good hand. I thought about getting Tundra, but I just like lose to Wasteland if I do. Interesting, no uh, time walk into Oko. Try to find a land here. Okay. So ideally they would try to like tap out for Oko. We would force, they'd force, I'd fluster, and then I'd slam Tuff. Another thing that's possible is um, I top into a white source, I play Lavinia. You have time locked. Did they hit the land? They did. So now they have Oko with Fluster backup and Force. It's rough. So I know that our top card is an Opal. Feels bad because like I shouldn't have lost that second game. And now we're in a situation in game three where my opponent has opened up a very strong hand and I'm going to maybe lose because of my poor play. Like, I'm not definitely out of this yet, but we are not favored at the moment. So I think Stefan's thinking about if they should fluster or force back. And I don't think it really matters, um, if I'm being honest. Because let's say they fluster. I can fluster back and then they can just force my force. Or if they force, I fluster and then they can fluster my fluster. Interesting. Let me claw back in. A little bit of lag. Could try to do the uh, the top trick where I uh, draw a card with top, key. So I essentially draw two cards, but if they force my top on the way down, it's going to feel bad. But I think it's probably worth it. So if they have like a Force of Vigor right here, it's their fourth card. And they do. Or it's a trophy, okay. Uh, we have the planes in the deck. That's actually pretty good for us. Because now we have Tough. I mean, that's pretty good against the all counter spell hand. Wow. Are we coming back into this? Um, okay, so that's going to resolve, and they're going to have one fluster in hand. Okay. Saga time. So I could play Teferi here. The problem with doing that is that I can't activate Saga. Um, and if I do that, I'm just losing equity that way. But they could have Force of Vigor, and I, I can't protect from Force of Vigor. So it's like sort of a feel bad. I can always play tough later. All right, so now we're gonna Narsa. Well, let's make another construct. Now we can search for something. Um, do I want another top? Is top better than something like Lotus? All right, let's get in, and then I'm gonna play. Uh, I think Narsa. I think they get out of this game by like drawing Ancestral. So that's my mindset, just stopping how they get ahead. I don't think, uh, like I could get Tinker here for Sphinx, but I just want to try to cut off Stefan's outs. Like I think I just, that's how I believe I'm, I need to win this game. Just to like slowly eliminate all the outs. Like obviously taking Tinker for Sphinx there is like super sweet. Um, but it's also like really far away because I'd have to Teferi into uh, Tinker because we there's a known fluster. So why not just take the conservative plays and like try to not lose or let them ever get ahead. Um, so obviously Time Bolt's like a decent draw here. 
Um, three cards. All right, we got it. Came back and won. Fought our way out. Wow, Urza Saga did some serious lifting this game. Wow. All right, well, I went 6-2 today. That's good enough for top 32. I was 28th coming in. No chance of top 16. Uh, I didn't play that well today, if I'm being honest, in my opinion. Like, the, the list was really, really good. I loved the deck list. I think I could have played better. With some better play, who knows what could have happened. But instead, we went 6-2. You know, hard to be mad at 75%, uh, right? Yeah, 75%. Oh well. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Take care. Cheers. All that good stuff. I'm going to go eat dinner. See ya. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.